Welcome to the Class of 99 Scouting Report, an inside look at Penn State's latest football recruiting class. Considered to be one of the nation's strongest classes, this year's freshmen add high school All-Americans to almost every position on the Lion roster. 19 top-notch players, and you are about to see them all in action along with the commentary by national recruiting expert Phil Gross. Thanks to all the high school coaches, recruits, and their families for making this presentation possible. Get ready, Penn State alumni and fans, as the class of 99 takes the field together for the first time right in your own living room. Aaron Harris was one of the most dominating players on the field this season, a key part of a Downingtown high backfield that ran for nearly 4,000 yards. He rushed the ball 226 times for 1,832 yards and 32 touchdowns his senior year after gaining 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns as a junior. An honor student with a 3-0 GPA, he was a first-team big school All-State and Philadelphia Inquirer selection and was named to the G&W Top 50 and the Parade and Lemming All-America teams. Uh, Harris should be an exceptional fullback prospect because as you see here from the film, he can run from the down position up front or run from the tailback spot and he's a north-south runner. But the thing that makes Harris so exceptionally dangerous is his ability to bounce the ball outside and accelerate. He's a kid that has 4.5, 40-yard speed. And watch here on this film, see how he went up inside and was able to bounce it outside and run away from the outside pursuit from the outside linebacker. It's also kind of amazing that he averaged 8.6, almost 9 yards a carry throughout his high school career. Because here, here he's shown he's returned punts, but he also played both ways at a linebacker position on defense and averaged over 14 tackles per game. Uh, he's got exceptional power. He has a good lean when he runs with the football. And as we said, watch on all these running plays, with the plays clogged up on the inside, he has the ability and the speed to take it outside and break it for a long run down the sideline. Watch here on the tape, it shows his acceleration from the linebacker spot where he comes in and reads a play, and once he diagnoses a play, he comes in and makes exceptional penetration on that play. Uh, Harris, I don't think, I think will be redshirted, but I think he has the potential, especially with Penn State coming back with Milne and uh, John Whitman at the fullback position, but he does exceptional accelerations that's shown here on the play on the pursuit of the quarterback there. And he has a frame probably to go about 225 to 230 pounds. And uh, that's what we exceptionally like about Harris as a fullback prospect, because he brings speed to the position and really could be an exceptional running back. A classic drop-back passer with exceptional mobility, Kevin Thompson led Damascus to the Maryland State Championship as a junior and returned for his senior season to complete 73 of his 144 passes for 1,171 yards, 14 touchdowns, and only six interceptions. Physically, Thompson is the type of quarterback that Penn State likes to run in his system. He goes about 6'5", 6'6", about 190 pounds. One thing that Thompson has, which most young quarterbacks don't have, being so tall as he is, is a very, very quick release. He doesn't have a long release. When Kerry Collins came here to Penn State, they had to work on him. He was a baseball pitcher and tended to have a little bit of the so-called hits you read about in the papers of late. But Thompson has a very fluid motion, sets up well in the pocket, and has a very, very quick release. If you watch on a couple of these passes down the line here, watch here as he rolls out, how he snaps it right off from his ear and has a quick release when he throws it down and out to his wide receiver. Also, uh, Thompson does seem to have a feel for pressure and has the ability, which a lot of big quarterbacks at the high school level don't have, is the ability to throw it while running to his left. He doesn't look like he's a strictly, uh, you know, pocket passer and has the ability to throw on the run as well as in the pocket. Watch here, and he sets up and he feels pressure from the backside and, and scrambles and, and does show pretty good mobility, he has good feet, he sets up well quickly in the pocket, and uh, they, they got to be pleased with the fact there that he shows the ability to throw a quick strike while moving and rolling out. It's something that a lot of Penn State quarterbacks in the past haven't been able to do. 
but there's no, but there's no question that, that uh, Kevin Thompson will be redshirted, but his development this spring will be important because uh, they're only going to be three deep at the quarterback position. His senior season, Shaffy Fields gained 861 yards and scored 15 touchdowns on 155 carries despite minor injuries, and he gained nearly 2,000 yards over the past two years. He was a Philadelphia Daily News first-team all-area selection as a junior and a senior and was named to the Philadelphia Inquirer first-team all-Southeast Pennsylvania squad as a junior. It's easy with watching Chaffee Fields here to get a feel for his 4.3740 yard speed because Matt's bomb essentially runs an option type of offense and a lot of the rushes you'll see in the film of Chaffee here is a pitch from the quarterback. But uh, Fields is a very interesting type of athlete. He's, he's now 6'1", 206 pounds. And uh, this summer at a, at, a, at a camp that I was at, he ran electrically timed 4.37. And he, it, it'll be interesting. He could be a big tailback. He says if things don't work out for him, he'd like to be a wide receiver. And I think he also, as we'll see later on in the film, he could be an exceptional safety. And watch him there. He's the captain on the kickoff situation here. I know he's going to return a fumble here for a touchdown. But he's definitely the leader of his football team. And uh, he has football smarts. He just seems to be around the football defensively, as you'll see later on in film. But as uh, you'll see a little bit later on, too, when he intercepts a pass and runs it for a touchdown, you'll see him display his 4.3740 yard speed. He just breaks away from people. And if you look at 6'1", 206 on this run, he does have the ability to cut it back against the grain. And uh, he's a high stepper, which makes him hard to tackle. Good soft hands there, showing the ability to catch the ball, seeing why. Actually, he said to us that if he doesn't be running back, he might like to be a wide receiver instead of a free safety on defense, or I think he'd be exceptional at. There he goes catching the football, and you see his ability to, to run away from people there because people had the angle and they couldn't bring him down at all. Here's where you'll see his breakaway speed. He catches the ball about three or four yards deep in the end zone, and he just runs away from people, and uh, uh, maybe not quite as fast as Kajana Carter, but explosive, explosive speed. Consensus All-American Conchell Brown was one of the few bright spots during a down year for Parkland. On offense, he made 32 catches for 342 yards and two touchdowns, and as a defensive lineman, he made 49 tackles and four sacks. Brown was a parade All-American and was selected to All-America squads released by G&W, Super Prep, Blue Chip Magazine, and Lemming. I'll tell you, it's my opinion that Brown may be the best athlete to Penn State recruit. He's 6'6", six 240 pounds. You'll watch him here catching this pass and dragging guys for five and six yards, but later on in this film, film you'll see him catch a sideline pass near the end of the tape from, on Brown, where he shows the ability to cut back once he catches the ball and just shows how great of an all-around athlete he is. Uh, he, he has a good initial first step. Uh, watch him here as he, as he fakes the block and goes out on a down-and-out pass and shows the ability to have soft hands and make a good catch. Uh, with Doug Ostrowski being moved to the quarterback spot, we don't know if that's permanent. Uh, it'll probably be very, very important for uh, Concho Brown, who we see here on defense putting pressure on the quarterback, to develop a little bit early. I see him and probably Bland as short as the two freshmen that are probably going to have the best opportunity to get some playing time in 1995. Here he has a good rush on the quarterback, shows good agility, and a lot of people think he could be as effective as a defensive end as a tight end in, in college, so it'll be interesting to see how he's developed. But Penn State has exclusively recruited him as a tight end. Here's the play we're talking about when he catches the ball and uh, makes a little move down the sidelines and makes the guy miss him, something a six foot six, 245 pound guy shouldn't do. Corey Jones was one of the nation's top wide receiver recruits. In his career, he caught 164 passes for 2,589 yards and scored 26 touchdowns. A USA Today and Parade All-American, he was also selected to the G&W, Blue Chip Illustrated, Super Prep, and Lemming All-America squads and was a big school first team All-State selection as a junior and senior. As you can see from the first clip on Corey Jones here, what makes him exceptional wide receiver is once he catches the ball, he becomes a running back. He, it would be kind of unfair to call him a Bobby Ingram clone, but he has the same type of abilities. He, he has very, very quick feet, and like I said, once he catches the ball, he's no longer a receiver. He becomes a running back, which makes him so dangerous, 
and you can run those simple little type of slip screens that are so effective with Bobby Ingram over the center of the field. Uh, Corey has, has very, very soft hands, and as you'll see later on here in the film, he has excellent 4.4 40-yard speed. And when we're talking a little bit about his quick feet, you'll see that uh, capability right here where he returns a couple of punts and shows the ability to look like a running back when he has the ball. And to give you an idea of how good Penn State's uh, wide receiver and tight end combination that they recruit, we saw Brown a little bit ago, the tight end 6'6", 245, and here we see Corey Jones. Super preparated, Jones the number one wide receiver prospect in the country, and Concho Brown the number one tight end prospect in the country. So I can't ever remember in recruiting where Penn State's had that type of success and recruited those type of athletes, and you'll see what a great offense can do in one season. Shows the ability to go over the middle, not afraid to go over the middle. He's only about 5'10", 5'11", 165, 170 pounds. And uh, sometimes a, a, a receiver that type of size has, doesn't like to go over the middle, but Jones shows the ability to come across the middle and the willingness to take some punishment. You can see there his separation and his 4.4, 40-yard speed where he runs away from the guy who had the angle on him. You'll see him here making the interception. He won't end up as a defensive back, I don't think, at Penn State. But you can see his, his explosive speed, his speed, you know, once again shown after intercepting the touchdown and taking an 85 yards for a touchdown. Cordell Mitchell earned Class B New York Player of the Year and was named to the first team All-State squad after running for 1,671 yards and 17 touchdowns his senior year. He was named a Parade All-American and was also selected to All-America teams picked by Blue Chip Illustrated and Super Prep. As you can see from the first clip from Cordell Mitchell, he definitely does have 4.4 40-yard speed, just ran away from those people there. As you see as the table go along, Cordell Mitchell has an excellent cutback ability. In fact, uh, several coaches, high school, college coaches and high school coaches that are watching run, said they compare his running style very, very similar to a former Penn State All-American by the name of Kurt Warner. We're not saying he's going to be as productive as a runner at Penn State as Kurt Warner was, but you see right there with his ability to cut back against the grain. And he's also very, very explosive out of the cut. You'll see that a little bit later on a couple of runs where he takes him over 50 yards for a touchdown. Once he makes a cut, he has the ability to be going full speed one step after he makes the cut, which is exceptional. Here he is cutting back against the grain and just running away from people and showing his speed. Here's an excellent play of his cutback ability. He catches a flare pass out to the left and completely takes it across field to the right and scores a touchdown. The nice thing about uh, Mitchell is the fact he goes about six foot, six foot, six foot one, and he's a good size, 192 pounds. And when you combine that with his 4.43 speed, it's the type of tailbacks that Penn State have brought into the program in the last couple of years. We can't say he's as fast as Kajana Carter, but he gives him that type of explosive punch. See how he finds a hole, explodes right through it, and just runs away from everyone. Eric Cole had 87 tackles, blocked two punts, and scored a touchdown as a defensive tackle on a Unionville team that won the school's first ever District 1 AAA championship. Cole was selected to play in the Hero Bowl, Delaware County's postseason all-star game, and was honored by Philadelphia's Maxwell Club as one of December's players of the month. Cole is a big offensive lineman. He goes about 6'5", 6'6", 299 pounds. He was first team all area selection by the Philadelphia Inquirer. And later on in the film, what I like about Eric Cole is these quick feet right here, watch while they run the counter tray where they pull him from the tackle position, and he leads the tailback through the hole into, you know, to the right side of the field. It's a favorite play of Penn State that they've copied off of the Washington Redskins. And the fact that Cole has the ability to move at 6'5", 6'6", and pull in that type of a play 
Uh, you look at Penn State's offensive linemen right now, Andre Johnson, the rest of them, their best asset is their, their athletic ability and their quickness, and Cole seems to have some of those traits here. And watch him here later on as the, as the punts go on. He's the first player downfield, and he shows good agility and good speed, and uh, that's what you're looking for in offensive linemen. When people look at offensive linemen, they look at speed, balance, and their quickness and explosion, and uh, blocking, believe it or not, can be taught. And that's the things I like about Cole, his ability to pull and his quick feet and to run the counter tray. You'll see him a little bit here playing defense, but I, I think at Penn State, he'll be exclusively used as an offensive line. See right there in this punt, he's the first player downfield and gets in on the tackle, and uh, rarely do you find a lot of offensive tackles get down on punt coverage that quickly. There he is running the counter tray again, getting good balance, having a good wide base when he blocks downfield, and uh, I think he could be probably 6'6", 320-pound offensive lineman in college. Chad Krell set Pennsylvania records by throwing for 79 touchdowns in his career, including 49 last fall and passing for 3,151 yards. He scored a 1,140 on the SAT and is ranked fifth in his class. He was named to the USA Today Honorable Mention team, was a second team All-State selection, and was a three-time District 9 All-Star. Krell is, is a little bit different from Kevin Thompson, who we looked at earlier in the tape. He only goes about six foot tall. Has a nice touch on his ball. Doesn't have as powerful an arm as, as Kevin Thompson, but does show the ability here to throw it and have a nice touch on the ball thrown deep. There, I think he's hitting his favorite. Uh, yeah, that's West Dallum, number three, his favorite receiver, who's also coming to Penn State. And uh, he has the ability to throw it rolling out. Uh, and he also is a pretty good athlete. If things don't work right out for him at the quarterback position, he's about six foot, 192 pounds. He's only 16 years of age. He probably could be like his brother and end up being a, a defensive back in Penn State secondary, but it'll be interesting to see how he develops. And uh, the major concern you're going to have to wear, look for him when he, he develops the quarterback the next couple of years is if he gains a couple of inches and if he has trouble seeing downfield with the offensive lineman being 6'3", 6'4", the fact that he's only barely just six feet tall. He's a tough kid. Not afraid to take the ball and run it. And uh, I guess the only other question beside maybe his size is, is, is the level of competition that Clearfield played. It does play in the biggest conference in the state of Pennsylvania. And up the upper part of District 6 is not known for his great football, but he does seem to have a good football sense like his brother who played at Penn State. And like I said before, if things don't work out at the quarterback position, he could end up being a solid strong or free safety on the defensive side of the ledger. An exceptional high school career, I think in his senior season alone, he passed for 37 touchdown passes, threw for over 7,000 yards, and set both yardage and touchdown records for passing in the state of Pennsylvania. Gabe Tincher was a first-team All-State, All-Southwest District, and All-Greater Catholic League selection after his senior year. As a junior, when Moeller advanced to the state title game, Tincher was an honorable mention All-State choice and a second-team All-District and All-League pick. Tincher probably comes from the most storied high school program in America at Moeller High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. He goes about 6'3", 290 pounds. As you see here on most of the tape, he plays at the offensive tackle position but he has a very, very low center of gravity. He's an excellent drive blocker, as you'll see on the tape. And most people project him as to play at an offensive center position. Smart football player, has, has good technique, good wide base when he blocks. As I said, he's a good, a strong ahead pile, pile driving drive blocker. And I think what Penn State has said earlier and the way it looks, he's going to definitely be used at the offensive center position. Uh, as you can see there, he's sitting at the, uh, up at the tackle spot. I think he'll block down on the guard. and. Uh, most of the, the, the procedures that they used with him at Mola were straight ahead drive blocking. And at about 6'3", 290, 285, he has a perfect uh, stature for a center. Paterno doesn't like centers 6'5", 6'6", 
He likes about 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 about 285, 280, 290, and Tincture really fits right into that mold. As a linebacker, Rich Stankowitz led Henderson in tackles, averaging more than 15 per game and averaging more than 100 tackles as a junior and a senior. A first-team linebacker selection by the Philadelphia Inquirer, Stankowitz was also named to the first-team Big School All-State team as a defensive lineman and was named to the All-Chestmont League first-team squad as a linebacker, tight end, and punter. Rich Stankowitz goes about 6'4", 265 pounds, and you might be a little bit surprised that you're watching right here now that on most of this film, you'll see him playing at the inside linebacker position on offense. Here he shows the ability to play off the block, fill the hole very, very quickly, and shows a lot of agility for a player 6'4", 265. In fact, I think probably, even at that size, he's probably one of the best athletes that Penn State recruited this year. He's an All-American lacrosse player, plays midfield. If you're very familiar with that sport, lacrosse makes you be a good athlete, does a lot of running in that sport. Uh, eventually, I think he's going to grow into about six foot four, six foot five, 275 pounds to 208 pounds. And I think he, he's going to play at an offensive guard position. And uh, he reminds me a lot of Jeff Harding's on film. And here he shows his ability punting the ball, just how good of an athlete he is. He did everything for Henderson High School in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And it's easy to see why he was first team All-State player, both on offense and defense. On offense here, watch him. They use him at the H-back position, and they follow off his lead block, so it shows his power, and it shows his good initial first step of why I think he could be a fine offensive guard. Good hitting position here when he makes a tackle. Drove through, had his hips low, and drove into the guy when he made the tackle. Good range, good lateral pursuit shown here on the, on the sweep where he cuts in the cutoff when he try, the runner tries to cut back. Maurice Daniels is considered one of the top prospects in Virginia. He was named the Gatorade Circle of Champions Virginia Player of the Year, was a two-time first-team All-State selection, a two-time first-team Washington Post All-Met nominee, and was the Virginia Defensive Player of the Year as a junior and a senior. His senior season, he made 127 first hits on tackles, cost seven fumbles, batted down seven passes, made 28 tackles for losses, and had six sacks. Probably, of a lot of linebackers I watched on film this year, probably the diagnosis is a player as well as anyone. There was some question about Daniel's speed. Some say he runs a 4'8", 4'7", 5". He goes about 6'1", 6'2", 225 pounds. But as you'll watch here on the film, he's always right around the football and always seems to know where exactly where the ball is and is exceptionally tough and tenacious. He's always right at the point of attack. Watch how he fills the hole here quickly and just seals off the play and brings the runner right down. Here he shows some good agility on the punt. We watch him here, he'll come in and, and, and block and strip, come back and, and let the guy get a good run down the sidelines. But good, good quickness, lateral quickness for his size. Maybe there might be a question about his, his straight ahead speed, but I think that he makes up for that very, very much with his knowledge and the way he plays on the football field. He, he actually plays a game like he's a coach's son, just he seems to know exactly what's going on. Should be interesting to watch both Brandon and uh, Short and Maurice Daniels develop this fall because I expect both players will be probably used in Penn State's 4-3 defense at the middle linebacker spot. West Dallam led the state in reception yards this season, gaining 1,349 yards and 19 touchdowns on 58 catches. He was named to the first team big school All-State squad and was a three-time District 9 All-Star.
Adele was, was Chad Kroll's favorite target. He caught passes for over 1,000 yards, was first team all, small school all state. There you see he has exceptional hands. Mepi isn't the fastest wide receiver, but has, makes a great adjustment to the ball when it's in the air and catches everything that's closely thrown to him. And just there, he adjusted very well, the ball, ball was behind him, and he turned his body to make the catch, and it may look kind of effortlessly. As we'll see a little bit later on here in the tape, there he is stepping in front, making the interception. If things don't work out the wide receiver position, he could play, I think, probably at the at the free safety position on defense. Got pretty good size, goes about 6'1", 175 pounds. Probably grew about to 190 pounds in college. But there he is again on defense, anticipating what's going to take place and reacts well to the ball once it's in the air. Does show good uh, foot speed and uh, ability to cut back here a little bit in the, on this punt return. Uh, and his coach claims he has 4.5 40-yard speed, and if that's the case, that would be a pretty good for a wide receiver. Here he shows pretty good speed, closes, gets the angle, and brings the player down from behind. Once again, adjusts very well to the ball when it's in the air. As a defensive tackle this season, Basim Grant finished with 58 tackles, 18 sacks, 8 forced fumbles, and 2 fumble recoveries. Also as an offensive tackle, Grant played in the New York All-City All-Star Game. When you look at Grant here on film, it's hard to believe that he's six foot six, 310 pounds. When that first play that's there, had excellent technique, good wide base, sealed off his block really well. He probably has the ability to both either be an offensive tackle or a defensive tackle at Penn State these next four years. Penn State actually recruited him as a defensive tackle, and later on in the film, we'll see him make excellent penetration. Watch here and play off the black, play off the block, excuse me, and uh, and really, really ties everything up right in the middle. Showing great initial first step there, or coming defensively coming in to make the tackle. There he plays off the block really well. Makes good penetration there, shreds the blocker, and uh, able to bring the player right down. Here you see uh, Grant's excellent speed and, and that way to run down the quarterback from behind and shows he's a good initial first step, shows good lateral mobility, big number 72, certainly at six foot six. There he is making great penetration again, shedding the block. As a senior, Anthony Cleary was second on his team with 80 tackles and had three and a half sacks. Also a fullback, he rushed the ball 78 times for 512 yards and six touchdowns and caught nine passes for 100 yards. Cleary was selected to the All-State team, named to the USA Today Honorable Mention Squad, and named to the Big Pen One Conference's Defensive Player of the Year. The early clips here are when Cleary showed running from the fullback position coming out, shows excellent athletic ability for a player that goes about six foot four, 250 to 255 pounds. Uh, play from the fullback spot, but at Penn State, he'll probably exclusively lose the defense. If you watch a little bit later on in the film, defensively, right starting with this clip, He's playing the nose tackle position. 
and he demands a double team block the entire time. He, he, he's exceptionally tough, physical player. Gets, look, look how low he gets here and, and totally disrupts the play on this play. To double team, does it take it, takes the fullback right on him and totally ruins the play. Very emotional football player, uh, but I'm convinced probably that Penn State will probably use him in their 4-3 defensive scheme at the defensive end position. And uh, for a kid with, with that type of size, he could be an outstanding pass rusher with this type of a initial quick burst, a quick first step, and his ability to run for someone at 6'4", 250 pounds. The quick burst there comes in and gets the quarterback, forces a fumble, but they don't recover him, but uh, sheds the blockers real well. Keeps good base. There he is running again from the fullback spot and shows very, very good speed and power for a kid that's 6'4", 250. As a junior, Lou Sessions made 80 tackles and six sacks, and this season he was third on the team with 64 tackles and added seven sacks and 11 tackles for losses. In both his junior and senior years, Sessions earned first team selections to the All-League and All-Southwest District teams and was an honorable mention pick on the All-State team. Uh, Sessions is another kid that could be used both either on the offensive or defensive line. There's about an equal number of clips in this tape. He shows good balance, shows good footwork, uh, shows the ability to shed blocks on defense. But I think he's probably going to end up as an offensive guard, end up playing probably around 6'6", 285, 290 pounds. He has good lateral mobility, and I think he probably would fit in with the type of style offensive lineman that Penn State seemed to like to recruit now, which has been shown this last couple of years with the uh, Hardings and Revere at the guard spots. And they go about 6'4", 6'5", 280, 285 pounds. During David Fleischauer's senior season, he made 79 tackles, 12 sacks, 18 hurries, and six blocked passes. Considered the top defensive line prospect in ACC country by several recruiting pundits, his coach at West Forsyth, Russell Stone, believes he's a much better player now than the one Penn State signed. Fleischauer was named to the G&W Top 50 and was a super prep All-American. As you can see from Fleischauer's first clip here, he's a penetrating defensive end, has a great initial first step, Ferocious pass rusher. There he gets another sack of two straight plays. But uh, uses his arms very well to shed off of blocks. Goes about six foot five, 245 pounds right now. Will probably grow into 260 pounds. I'm convinced he'll play the defensive line position. Uh, Super Prep ranked him as the number one, as their defensive player of the year, excuse me, in ACC country. He's just exceptionally quick off the ball, tenacious. Maybe he'd have to get a little bit stronger in the upper body but I think he has the ability to be an outstanding defensive end and fits perfectly into the scheme that Penn State's running now with his 4-3. And I think probably will we'll set up behind Brad Scioli at the, at the defensive end position opposite Todd, Todd Atkins. Where, and I think that he'll grow, like I said earlier, into 260, 265 pounds. But when we watched him play in the Shrine Bowl, which pit South Carolina against North Carolina, he definitely was the number one dominant lineman on the football field and defensively controlled that entire game. As a sophomore, Ascari Adams started at safety on a team that won the state championship and was named a first team big school all-state free safety his junior year. His senior year, he completed 68 of 145 passes for 1,063 yards, four touchdowns, and seven interceptions, despite being out for two games. Adams was named a first-team All-State safety for the second straight year and was also selected to the Super Prep and Lemming All-America list. From right off of the top, Scary Adams shows his athletic ability from the free safety spot, showed good concentration, uh, went to the ball very, very well. Tremendous athlete. In all these clips, you'll see him here run a touchdown, an interception back about 95 yards for a touchdown. Great acceleration. Some people have questioned whether he does have 4.45 40-yard speed, but you'll see when the clip ends, when he runs away from Kenny Watson, he's probably going to be the number one prospect at Harrisburg High School this year after he makes an interception, runs away from him on down the field. But here he steps in front, makes a great move, and uh, I think he'll be a free safety or a strong safety at Penn State. I just think his instincts 
would make him good in the center of the field. There you saw two straight plays where he came across and intercepted passes. Here he shows very, very good closing speed from the safety spot, comes over, makes a tackle, and stops the guy from waltzing into the end zone. But he, here he's also quarterback, could be a wide receiver here, catches the ball, and played a lot of quarterback. And Scary Adams is tough. Probably, I don't know which games we're watching here against which opponents, but most of his senior season, he played with a chip bone in his foot and didn't show any ill effects of it. So not only is he quick, fast, an intelligent football player, but he's a tough football player. And that's something you're looking for, especially in a strong safety or free safety on your defensive team. Here I think we're going to see a fumble and a scary is going to pick it up and I think take it for a touchdown. I think this is the play against Harrisburg. You watch Kenny Watson there closing and then just a scar just runs away from him. And Kenny Watson is a good 400 meter track man so it shows that he does have 4-4 speed. Named an All-American by Parade, USA Today, G&W, Super Prep, Blue Chip Illustrated, and Tom Lemming, Brandon Short is a big, quick, bruising middle linebacker in the mold of the NFL standout Junior Seau. In leading McKee's port to a 15-0 record and its first state title, he had 117 solo tackles, made seven sacks, caused five fumbles, returned a fumble for a touchdown, intercepted two passes, and blocked a punt. Yes, folks, Brandon Short is six foot four, 242 pounds, and yes, he will play the linebacker position at Penn State. There's a great sequence. And here this game is, 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 is Brandon Short against number 25, Aaron Harris, in the, in the Quad A championship game in Altoona Field, where, where, where Brandon Short just totally physically dominated the football game and showed why he was the Associated Press Player of the Year in the state of Pennsylvania. He can play against the pass as he showed there, has the physical ability to stuff the run, make great penetration, diagnosis plays. Physically, I think he's the best prepared football player coming out of high school to play the game of college football that I've ever seen on film. I mean, he won the AP Associated Player of the Year Award by his performance in his game here against Downingtown. And just watch carefully the goal line stand here, how he just totally, totally takes Aaron Harris here, meets him at the line of scrimmage, and throws him back, and you're talking about a 225-pound fullback, a player who some people think is the best fullback prospect in America. Great, great penetration, great di diagnosis of what's going on, and great lean and perfect hitting ability. The, the young man is a perfect middle linebacker in a 4-3 set, and he will play as a freshman at Penn State. Notice here is his quickness, his 4.645 40-yard speed, how well he covers the pass coming out of the backfield. Probably the most difficult thing for a high school linebacker to learn to come to the college level is to cover the pass, and Brandon already looks like he knows what he's doing. Make an interception there, good drop. Put it this way, I can't wait to see him play four years at Penn State. Curtis Enos, who was named Ohio's Mr. Football after his senior season in high school, rushed the ball 118 times for 1,181 yards and 19 touchdowns, despite missing a game with a slight injury this season. A middle linebacker on the other side of the ball, Enos anchored the defense with 31 solo tackles and 61 assists. He spent this past year preparing for the academic rigors of college at Kiske Prep. Yes, Curtis Enos is six foot three, 232 pounds, and he has legitimate 4.45 40 yard speed. We're watching clips here of his, of his, high, of his senior year when he was at Misha Norwa High School in, in, in Union City, Ohio. He went on last year to play at Kiske Prep in Salzburg, Pennsylvania. But last year at the Big 33 game, Curtis Enos was a player among boys. He was definitely the best player on the field. Look at him here displaying his 4.45 40-yard speed at 232 pounds. 
big fullback, could play fullback, could play tailback, physically just running away from people here. It, it's kind of interesting to see where Penn State's going to use him when he comes to Penn State. A lot of people think he could be an outstanding linebacker, played both ways in the Big 33 game, but watching here on film, I just can't believe that there's any place other than at tailback where Penn State's going to use him. You don't find too often when the guys are six foot two, six foot three, 232 pounds, have his type of power, his type of speed, and it's easy to see why he was Mr. Ohio's Mr. Football in 1993. Shiver a little four on there, run over people. Curtis will do whatever you do, to, whatever you ask him to do on offense. He, he's just one of the best, biggest, strongest running backs I've seen on film. Style-wise, Ernest Curtis Enos totally reminds me of Oklahoma All-American running back Marcus Dupree. Six foot three, 230 pounds, just like Marcus, and has 4.4 40 yard speed. It has been our pleasure to present the class of 99. We hope you enjoyed this informational presentation. If you would like us to send a class of 99 video to another Penn State fan, stand by for ordering information. Thanks for watching.